The strange combination of ambition, of energy, of drive and vision, along with a certain humility and, and kindness. And you don't often find that in really powerful leaders. He truly stands as an embodiment of a mega icon. Driven by purpose and inspired by impact, that's the man Keshav Mugesh for you. Everything around him, you know, kind of grows and thrives and he ensures that, you know, people are happy. Like, everybody gravitates towards a ray of sunshine. Charming, perceptive, a visionary, a leader for sure. Who's a mega icon? One who defies conventions and leads the way. Whose impact is larger than life and destined to leave a mark. After back-to-back -back successes at ITC and Sintel, the turnaround Doug is back at it again. Keshav Morugesh's revival of WNS has stunned the business world. Morugesh's new innovation puts India on the global map as a prime BPM hub. He has changed the face of the BPM industry forever. Keshav Morugesh, the CEO of the biggest BPM in the world. Hard to imagine now. We all thought he would land up as a cricketer. Keshav joined uh, our school, Don Bosco, in the third standard. I know him until now, so it's, it's almost uh, close to about 50 years plus that I've known uh, Keshav. He was a person with, you know, a lot of wit and you know, could bring a smile to anybody's face. Of course, his passion was cricket. He always had his attention veered towards that game. His mom, in those times, was the manager of the women's cricket team. They lived and breathed uh, cricket. His dad, uh, uh, Murgesh Ankal, was, uh, was a legendary figure in the, in the cricket field. His dad was a major inspiration for uh, Keshav. We used to go to see his matches and he was very serious about playing cricket for school. My focus was completely on you know, the cricket field and hoping to be selected in the sub-junior team uh, for the school. Which goes back to Arabian Sea, not Bay of Bengal. But when the team was actually announced, the coach goes class to class and calls out students one, one you, who are down. selected. Vishwanathan, Jansen, Mahesh. I was left out of that team and I was so disappointed. The only thing I could think of is I am left out, I am left out, I am left out, but my friends are selected. I spoke to my father about it. He said, you get back to coaching, go back to the ground, practice, you know, like crazy and do whatever you can to get selected in the team the next year. He took it on himself to do well, impress the coach again, and he came back. He came back stronger than before. Nelson Mandela once said, uh, you know, don't judge me by my successes. Judge me by the number of times I fell down and stood up again. I owned a cricket bat, David Boone's bat. I was very thrilled. I had this beautiful cricket bat. I had a pair of Dunlop green flash shoes. And I thought I was heading to the stars in terms of cricketing. One day, my father, he just had some difference with his boss, quit his job uh, and came back home. And I had to support that. That was a turning point in uh, uh, Keshav's life because people go through these things but how you fight back 
and you know adversities make you stronger that's the character which stood out in uh, keshav which we saw so one of the things i did was to become a sub broker of three uh, well known stock brokers uh, and i earned that 1 and 1/2 2% of brokerage and i remember i i did successfully sell quite a few ipos which are really big companies today he had that in him that spark in him to to fight out a battle which you know transformed him and made him what he is today while doing ca i also had to make a choice of actually helping my father create a business we focused on buying and selling tvs when you sell tvs one of the things i realized is that in india you will have tv shops right next to each other selling the same brands so you have to differentiate when a customer came in and they said you know why should i pay you 400 rupees more i would switch on a light behind the tv and say mine is a german or a japanese tube a telefunken tube or a japanese tube and that would actually convince the client that probably this tv was better and even now you know as i run a large company and as i have run large companies across the years i have always used that business ethic that the customer is always right in december of uh, i think it was uh, 1989 or so when a telegram came home uh, from itc limited you know inviting me for a uh, interview i met my father and he said they offered you air fare you should go right because you know it's uh, it was i think my first air journey very frankly so again the boy in me uh, was you know greedy was uh, very you know happy that i was getting an air fare so i said how what is the harm i'll go for two days and come back so i went off to calcutta i participated in that interview process where they actually had the best and the brightest come in from all over india for that final interview but then the hr leader told me that look you have to go and meet the finance director of itc who actually does the final interview so i waited he kept me waiting for 3 and 1/2 hours and i think in the car while coming he had read my profile mr murugesh the boss will see you now he had i think already made up his mind not to select me because as soon as i walked in he actually growled at me and he said you know how are you even in, in this uh, selection uh, group because you do not belong to the big four So I said, you know, may I at least sit down? So the first thing I told him was that I read your annual reports regularly, and they are full of mistakes. And that's the way I wanted to get his attention. Last year's annual report. Have a look. And I pointed out in two, three areas: translation errors, language errors, you know, minor errors. and he said you know what you have actually changed my mind i am selecting you right away i would really want you to you know join the uh, uh, itc and i walked out of there with a uh, an offer letter so one great example i can tell you is you know i participated in uh, a very interesting uh, transaction once and in that transaction the itc companies also made a very decent profit and we made that profit without itc making any investment because of some initiative i had shown and my boss at the time was super impressed hi keshav but what i felt most inspired about was when he walked into my office one day he said i don't know how else to recognize you but i have personally paid from my pocket and bought you this you know 10 grams or 20 grams a small piece of gold i then realized how important it was to motivate people make them feel good Sir, even though I can't wear this, but but this would be my gold medal. Give them a pat on the back, you know, when they do a good job, however small it is. After spending 13 valuable years at ITC, Keshav moved on to a struggling IT company, Sintel, turning it into one of the world's hundred fastest growing small companies. But the turnaround took was not done just yet. It was time to reinvent the BPO industry. I guess my first impression of Keshav was it was very clear to myself and everyone that he was going to be shaking up the status quo. 
Legacy BPOs at the time, with call centers in India, relied on the low-cost labor arbitrage model. To give you some history here, BPM industry was known as BPO. BPO is business process outsourcing, and BPM is business process management. Now, in the early days, let's say what we call back office operations, customer support, technical support, help desk, they were being done in India by the BPO industry. While the low-cost BPO model became an attractive option for companies in the West, it was evident that the industry needed a shake-up. Keshav saw great potential for growth in the sector, something he initiated when he joined WNS, a New York Stock Exchange listed company set up as a captive for British Airways in 1996. WNS, after it became public, was lacking the leadership it needed to take the company to the next level. And the share price was also heading in the wrong direction because of its exposure to financial services companies during the financial crisis. So we initiated a search for the new CEO and the guy at the top of the list was Keshab. So there I was at waiting for the man that they called the turnaround Turk. I had an hour to try and convince him to, to be the new CEO. So we sat down and then he spoke to me about this company called WNS. I knew instantly he was the right guy to run this business. We talked intensively. And then at the end of 45 minutes, I said, time for me to you know, leave. He also said, yeah, time for me also to leave. And I said, but where are you going? And he pointed to an aircraft. And he said, you know, I flew in from London on that aircraft, and I'm now flying back on that aircraft. That's the time that the impact of that conversation hit me, that somebody was willing to make an effort of flying 18 hours in order to have a 45 minute meeting with somebody he didn't know anything about. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. He was the right guy to run this business and he's proved that many times over. When I took the role at WNS and came in, it was in a situation which was actually in downward spiral. So when I came in, I actually had to, you know, I walked into the deep end of the pool and I had to, you know, really uh, pull together a, a lot of assets as well as try and create some magic that would help differentiate us. For a CEO to be effective, it's very important that they make the best decision possible given the information on reality that's out there, not information that's been fed to them because that's what people want them to hear. So one of the first things I did was, you know, engage with a lot of people inside the company. I was shocked when the feedback was they did not trust senior management at all, right? And they actually felt that uh, senior management had let them down. And that was a good starting point for me to actually hold uh, you know, my first meeting. You know, rather than follow the traditional model of just inviting five or six of the senior leaders to a strategy meeting, I branded and created a very interesting meeting format called the Seven Samurai format, which 14 years later also is still in force and still motivates a lot of people. Empowering people to speak and then giving them a forum to speak, critique, understand, appreciate, and discuss, right? And that's what Samurai was. The first program that we created that was a trailblazer, I would say, is a program called Bravo. Bravo obviously is our annual event where uh, we bring together uh, people across the organization to celebrate successes. You know, people are getting very excited. A Porsche is going to be given away. And I said, hey, this is my kind of company. <laughs> Where do I sign up for a Porsche? However, rewarding star performers wasn't enough to retain talent. So Murugesh introduced Wincubate. Wincubate is a program where innovation is rewarded in, in terms of the ability to create new services, new offerings, new capabilities within the company, and then to take those ideas to market. But I think what is the secret sauce there is, along with that one offering that wins the award, I also managed to get at least 15 to 20 other offerings free of cost. And all the people who were selected for these awards chose to get shares of WNS which means I retained them, I was able to hold them you know, for the long term. 
one of the things that I was able to enforce was that what brought us there would not take us to the next level uh, of growth. We announced that we will be the first company that will introduce an end-to-end -end vertically aligned strategy. Verticalization essentially meant that there was a memory within the WNS system of how a specific industry operates. And therefore, the ability to engage with clients dramatically increased. Virgin Atlantic and WNS have been working together for over 20 years. When you show up at a WNS office, you immediately get the sensation that the team working in WNS don't only work just for WNS. They have a strong affinity with us, their customer. Kesha of WNS exhibit the same ethos and, and vision about people and customers, and that's why we get along so well. Soon, the industry was transformed and most companies began to adopt a verticalized strategy. Keshav was at the forefront and coined that, that acronym BPM is, is when he was with NASCOM. If you fast forward now to 2023 and look at where the BPO industry, BPM industry is today, obviously completely different positioning. There's no doubt that Keshav, along with strong advocacy by the tech industry body, NASCOM, National Association of Software and Service Companies, that he was chairman of from 2019, 2020, has been instrumental in repositioning and rebranding BPOs into BPMs. And that was a masterstroke by uh, Kesha and his team. Today, WNS partners with over 400 clients, offering a range of industry-specific BPM solutions through 60,000 personnel across 66 global hubs, providing BPM services such as customer experience, accounts, HR, procurement and analytics, with the help of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and generative AI, enabling WNS to consistently reinvent the digital future of business. Yeah, I think that this is uh, probably uh, one of India's most wonderful success stories. The company was doing extremely well. We were the leader in terms of growth rates. We were the leader in terms of delivering higher profitability than, you know, uh, than the peer set. Our stock was doing you know, quite well. And overnight, uh, you know, all the countries that we operated in, including India, suddenly shut down. Cities in crisis, COVID-19 lockdown brings urban life to a standstill. Streets empty and landmarks deserted. COVID-19 curfews leave cities quiet and dim. We had no idea the pandemic was coming. And that was a very strict lockdown, as you know, even a bird cannot fly, as we used to say. Our systems were not geared up to handle this. Sandipit came and he was back into the thick of things and, you know, he had to do a lot to ensure that people don't lose job. At that point in time, actually, I was the chairman of NASCOM and I had to start working with the government to essentially declare IT services and business process as an essential service. We had more than 4 million uh, engineers uh, servicing the customers around the world. So if our work comes to stop, most of the applications around the world will also come to a halt. We were able to convince the government, and I can tell you the government was extremely supportive and has always been very supportive of our industry. Airlines were probably the first hit by the pandemic and the hardest hit. And the only way we could really live up to the expectations of our customers from Virgin Atlantic was through working very rapidly and quickly with WNS to provide service to our customers. And that made a dramatic difference to the way people viewed Virgin Atlantic in this crisis. But uh, I think part of why WNS was able to handle it well is that these discussions preceded the pandemic. Behind every great company is a host of other companies that make us do what we do, right? And WNS is exactly one of those companies. So when the world 
uh, held its breath. I think WN has completely recreated what this industry stands for. WNS reinvented the BPM industry during the COVID-19 pandemic under Keshav's agile leadership. But there were other beneficiaries too. He is a very different kind of investor. He rolls up his sleeves and joins the founders and the senior management. When COVID came, the world came to a standstill. At that point of time, he said, don't see this as a challenge, see it as an opportunity and do something big. Keshav is a trailblazer in business and philanthropy and he's pushed the limits uh, to do amazing things. For us, giving back is extremely important in whichever way, small, big, uh, where we are today. With WNS Cares Foundation, there's a lot of satisfaction from where we started. Good afternoon. So, my name is Tej Rajesh More and my project name is Flood Alert. And therefore, we created WNS Cares Foundation you know, uh, uh, many years ago. An organization I'm extremely you know, passionate about. It is, uh, it is an organization that makes sure that as a company grows, people around each of the campuses we operate in feel they're part of, of that growth. We work on some key initiatives there, specifically around uh, empowerment of uh, children. I think lots of interesting business ideas also have now been generated. You know, normally what I found with corporates is they'll debut their CSR head. In his case, it was, he was leading from the front, which meant that it mattered to him and that he genuinely cared. I think Keshav's legacy will be that he's been a good human being. I think that's what it is. I mean, it, it kind of... But that's what he is. And that's what his legacy will be. Ultimately, all of us leave legacies. And the reason I say this is very important because over a period of time, you will see that more of us, you know, will move to other things as we leave the company to the next generation. I think going forward, what I would look forward to doing is, you know, achieving more in other areas. So for example, achieving the calmness of Shamini, uh, the passion and zest for life that my father, my mother, and my mother-in-law have. And, you know, the affection and the ability to move between having fun and working hard that my children have, that's a goal I'm going for now.